Episode 632, Poor People Like You. However, Doria was upright and forceful. She raised her head in disdain and muttered, You haven't paid yet, sir. Since you haven't paid, our company still owns the apartment. I have no obligation to sell it to you. People could be so strange sometimes. Daria had once regarded Aiden and Olivia as important guests and kissed them in every way possible. But as soon as someone offered her more money, Daria acted like they weren't even there. In particular, Leon's fanatical flirting with Olivia made Daria feel jealous. This was the main reason she had turned so impolite. Olivia, seeing Daria's 180-degree change in attitude, got so angry that she couldn't speak for a while. Leon was in the mood to laugh, so he pointed at Aiden and provoked him. What? Are you not going to compete with my offer? If you can't, you should just go home and let your mommy take care of you. Aiden looked at Leon, his face stern. He was completely wrong in saying that Aiden couldn't afford to one-up his offer. In addition to the income from the Midnight Snack Corner, he also had the investment income from Hardy. Now that Night Owl stocks were booming, the company's revenue was soaring. As the largest shareholder, Aiden's dividend was also increasing day by day. From Night Owl alone, he had brought in $10,000 in the first month, $200,000 in the second month, and $1.1 million in the last month. If he actually gathered all his funds, he would easily be able to outbid Leon for the apartment. However, it felt like an enormous waste of money and time. Aiden would not spend his money in order to win a fight with someone this childish. In this case, there were other solutions. Aiden furrowed his brow and pulled out his phone. He began scrolling through the address book. Leon thought that Aiden was looking to call to make a complaint about the building or to call other building options. He was certain he had won. Proudly, he bragged to Olivia. Beautiful, you look at this man and then contrast him with me. Am I not a hundred times more attractive than him? Break up with him and come with me. I can give you anything you want, whenever you want it. Daria watched him flirt with Olivia in jealousy. She wanted nothing more than to be the woman he was proposing these things to. Olivia, meanwhile, still gave him nothing. She didn't even want to give him the time of day. But the more Olivia ignored him, the more itchy he became. Meanwhile, Aiden was calling one of the numbers that was in his phone. The caller ID read Gustav Biatti. After all, Biatti was a real estate tycoon. He should also be the real estate developers who were behind the hidden gardens. Aiden wanted to contact the real estate agent directly to broker the apartment sale. After hearing Aiden's situation, Beatty said, And Mr. Dale, are you in Hidden Gardens right now? I am. Just a moment. I'll be right there. Aiden chuckled. Beatty had already hung up the phone. After finishing the call, Aiden packed up, grabbed Olivia's hand, and made to leave. Just give up. This kind of place isn't made for poor people like you. You're no more entitled to this apartment than you are to this beautiful girl here. Aiden and Olivia left the apartment hand in hand, much to Leon's chagrin. Their disagreement continued all the way to the Hidden Garden sales office. After arriving in the sales office, Aiden was peeved at the fact that Leon wouldn't leave him alone. Instead, he sat leisurely in the hall of the sales department, crossing his legs and reading the newspaper. Although Olivia didn't know what Aiden was planning, she still gently sat by Aiden's side, holding a cup of hot coffee for him. Leon looked at Olivia and Aiden with insurmountable jealousy. He snarled at them, but still sat near them, staring at them intimidatingly. The sales department staff all looked at the scene with confusion. No matter how much they guessed, they couldn't figure out what the relationship between the three people was. Daria, meanwhile, had already closed her eyes and begun to imagine the wonderful life she would have after Leon bought the apartment at such a high price. About 20 minutes later, a group of people came rushing from outside the hall. They were dressed in suits and leather shoes, each acting in an extraordinary, dignified manner. They were obviously not ordinary office workers. There was a middle-aged man at the center of the crowd with a big bald head. He looked very different from everyone else in the group. However, seeing this man, the sales department was in a sensation. Mr. Beatty is here! Let's show off our collaborative skills and welcome Mr. Beatty together! Under the direction of the head of the sales department, all the employees present urgently lined up in the hall, just like a group of soldiers waiting for the general's inspection. How are you, Mr. Beatty? The bald, middle-aged man just glanced at the sales department and looked into the hall. Then, his eyes brightened, and he went straight to someone sitting there. Mr. Dale! He came to Aiden with a smile and gave him a bear hug. Aiden smiled, 
He didn't fully expect that Beatty would really come over in person. This man, of course, was Gustav Beatty. The people behind him were senior executives of Beatty's company. Those executives looked at Beatty hugging Aiden, and their eyes were full of shock. There were few people in the world who Beatty considered himself close to, much less so close that he would hug them. They couldn't help but look at Aiden curiously and guess his identity. Leon frowned when Beatty came in. Looking at Beatty, he knew that he had seen him before somewhere. Wait, who are you? Are you who this kid called? You're the one he asked for help? Beatty had not yet opened his mouth, but the executives were already up in arms against Leon. Presumptuous! You don't know who he is? One asked. You haven't heard of Gustav Beatty? One of the richest men in the country? Another added. Beatty! Leon turned white as if he finally remembered the man's face. Even in places like Arkland City, where successful men often gathered, Beatty's reputation preceded him. Even if Leon didn't care about current affairs, Beatty's name had been mentioned by his father countless times. Therefore, realizing this man was THE Gustav Beatty was startling to him. His family was rich, but no matter how rich, he could not compare with Beatty. Beatty could easily crush him to pieces with one little finger. Beatty glanced at Leon, whose face was turning green, and said coldly, Are you the one trying to buy my friend's apartment out from under him? He stood up and looked down his nose at Leon. I'm sorry, but this apartment isn't for you. Although Leon knew that things were looking down for him, he still wasn't going to just give up. Even if you are Gustav Beatty, you have no right to stop me from buying this apartment. 